Hi everybody, I want to talk about using the National Forest Maps um, as well as the Bureau of Land Management Maps, um, which is these maps, um, to help find uh, free and uh, very low cost uh, camping sites. So you are allowed to camp up to 14 days um, as long as it's outside um, the normal campsite ranges, uh, picnic areas and trailheads and 100 feet from any stream. So that's pretty great, uh, 14 days. Um, so you will find that there are campsites uh, for the BLM land, uh, Bureau of Land Management. Um, most of those are out west. Um, so it's pretty uh, scary actually. You can see um, basically everything is out west here. Um, and the same thing for the US Forest Service. Um, most of it is out west um, here. Um, and then you do see some uh, kind of uh, in the uh, lower uh, states here and then some up in the peninsula here, um, as well as a few um, kind of outside of New York area. So essentially what this means is out west has a lot of this Bureau of Land Management land. That's a lot primarily in Nevada, uh, Oregon, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, uh, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado. <coughs> And then some in Southern California, you can see this yellow areas here um, is Bureau of Land Management. Um, now, on the U.S. Forest Service, where I live out in Idaho, there's a lot of land um, that is Forest Service. Um, some of it is pretty difficult to get to. Uh, they have a trail access only certain times of the year. Um, a lot of it is up in the mountains, as you'll see here. Um, so you can't really get access um, to a great percentage of it in the wintertime um, because of the snow. Um, they'll actually block the roads um, and prevent access. Uh, there are many other types of campgrounds. For example, county parks uh, sometimes have uh, and you know, there's just a bunch of different uh, state parks and different things. Uh, but really, we're talking about free camping here. So, um, where I wanted to look at primarily uh, was along the West Coast. So basically, uh, Washington, Oregon, and California, and then to some extent Idaho, um, because there is a lot of camping out here uh, as well. So we're going to look at primarily some of the best camp spots um, along the West Coast. So they have a pretty simple website here, fs.usda.gov.ivm. Um, and it's a little more complicated web address here, but I'll post that uh, down below. You'll have to click on something to get the YouTube video uh, to show uh, exactly what the link is for these two maps uh, so you can go and study them yourselves. Uh, you might just stop the video now and actually just go and study them yourself. But if you want some more details, um, as well as some of my personal um, recommendations, uh, you can go ahead and see this video to the end. So basically there's I-5 that runs along the entire West Coast as well as Highway 101 uh, and then Highway 1. Um, and what you see is that uh, basically the Forest Service is primarily just shy of this and there are a couple spots along the uh, ocean front uh, that do have and then the Olympic Peninsula here. Unfortunately, you kind of got to combine both of these maps uh, to see. It doesn't really show all the campsites. BLM <clears throat> looks like it does a little bit better job of showing the uh, actual campsites here. Um, but uh, again, you really got to zoom in uh, to see uh, precisely where they are. And it looks like 86 campsites. So, uh, so basically... Uh, what I found is that I have to get in on I-90 into Seattle uh, and then take I-5 down to uh, Portland. Um, and then from Portland, you can take that all the way down into California and get into Reading. <coughs> uh, but pretty much uh, all these campsites here, um, this is up in the Cascades. Um, so, And then there's a couple uh, sites down here which might be really packed. Uh, actually uh, during the year so you have to maybe reserve these sites but on the normal off off the beaten path uh, lands there should be free 14-day uh, access uh, to all these uh, sites so uh, we're really what happens here is out in Nevada you get a lot of uh, sites and it looks like really even Utah has a ton of spread out sites so if you're interested in checking out different areas uh, Utah looks really good uh, as well as uh, 
Colorado and uh, New Mexico, you can see here. Um, so there's quite a dispersed range, so you can kind of um, check a bunch of different places. Uh, so for this road trip, uh, I'm basically coming from Idaho, heading into uh, Seattle, uh, and then heading down along uh, the coast, uh, and then going into uh, Salinas here, uh, Monterey Bay, and then heading down to Los Angeles. Um, this might be a little bit different because I couldn't really show all the details here. Um, let me just change this back uh, so you can see uh, kind of what the trip would look like if it wasn't in a full circle. So. Uh, but so let me just show you a quick example here. Um, my brother really told me that Ruby Beach is really awesome beach out here uh, along the Olympic Peninsula. Um, so traditionally what most people do is they go to Google and they search for camping uh, and it gives you pretty good uh pretty good guide for where you can camp overall. A lot of times it shows uh you know uh, not so legit campgrounds, uh, but particularly along the oceanfront, uh, you will see uh, pretty legit campgrounds uh, with bathrooms, showers, um, electrical hookups, um, water, all things geared even for RVs. So, uh, but this is primarily for tent camping and car camping um, along uh, the Pacific coast. So, but really what we wanted to find was the lower cost and free spots. So, let me take you back up to that same space. So basically what we're talking about um, is camping all the way up uh, from the Olympic Peninsula um, down to California. Um, and here you see that there's not really any BLM land and there's no campsites on BLM property here. So, uh, but here you can start to see where some of the Forest Service maps are. Um, in green and it actually even shows it in a different color here, um, which is a little bit hard to see. Let me see if I can change base map back to the uh, topographic map or something that might be, nah, it's not easy either. Um, maybe that's the easiest one to see. So <coughs> this shows streets. Um, National Geographic map looks really great too, but you can kind of not really see where uh, it makes it a little confusing. I don't know. Um, so here you can start to see, um, it does show a few little campsites, but again, these are a lot of these are paid sites. So, um, and you can see the road uh, basically goes around here from, uh, this is uh, Port Townsend out in this way. Um, and then there's Port Angeles here. And then that's pretty much you get into the Olympic Peninsula at that point. So let me just show you on a base map imagery. So you can see it's pretty forested out in this region and actually let's just leave it like this because you can actually see it pretty well uh you just can't see the roads so believe it or not this is the same highway 101 that goes all the way down to california um even down to los angeles so this highway 101 uh basically circles the olympic peninsula uh heads all the way down here and then hits into i-5 um so <coughs> Olympia is pretty pretty. Uh, it it's, it gets very urban. Uh, you know, you're basically talking about hotels, hundred dollars plus a night, hundred and fifty dollars typically uh, in Olympia, Tacoma, and Seattle. So, uh, and that's pretty much a day drive. Uh, getting around here, um, you know, it it could be quite a drive. So, um, but basically, all the camping spots are going to be on the Olympic Peninsula side. Now, there are some you can see outside of Seattle. Um, a little ways uh, kind of in this um, off of this road here uh, and then this is I-90 um, some camping spots um, right in here as well as some rest areas so um, you can combine those uh, to try to see um, to see what might be possible so uh, basically in the Seattle area um, you can basically drive <coughs> yeah it's uh, that's basically uh, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour uh, out of Seattle, and you can basically be uh, in the campground uh, area right in here. It does get cold. Um, there's a couple, looks like a little uh, forested areas there, but I would try to stick to these. Uh, it might be more like almost urban camping and some of those. Other. So it might take a little bit less than an hour. Um, I'm just saying an hour, um, uh, maybe 45 minutes, who knows. Um, so. Uh, but basically, um, you can get in and out of the city um, 
and camp out there, uh, which is one option. Now, if you want to go further north, um, it looks like there's even more options um, up into Everett. A lot of people like that, and that's actually about the same time-wise. Um, but uh, depending on where you want to start your trip, so this is Bellingham. Um, I just wanted to see for myself um, what this looks like. So it could get colder. Um, you know, when you get a thousand feet up into the air, um, which can be several thousand feet, um, you know, it does lose about 10 degrees or so. So, uh, but supposing that you want to start your trip on the Olympic Peninsula or down in California, um, we're going to look at either end here uh, in a moment. So. So since I'm coming in on I-90, BLM land uh, basically has that um, outside the city a little bit more. Um, this is actually sometimes closer to, uh, uh, you know, normal areas as well. So basically you can see um, the Spokane route actually has quite a number of camping spots um, here. So you can kind of see there is some spaces right here, maybe near the uh river uh this would be the snake river so i would have to write these down um and then pick them out um and maybe pick i would like to pick like two or three for the given night so i can check it out um, maybe a couple different spots just in case uh one of the spots don't work out uh, so there are several ways uh, i just never have driven around the entire olympic peninsula uh what i did as i drove up through portland uh, went through Astoria and then did the coastline here through Aberdeen and then went up through Olympia um, and then it gets pretty urban uh, after you get through Olympia it even gets kind of suburban uh, in those areas but um, this area is really beautiful uh, Astoria and then Aberdeen like the coastline here and then kind of coming along uh, this coast here was really pretty um, I really enjoyed that as well as this I-3 um, area. I think I drove that um, or even this side was really nice too. I think I drove that up to uh, Port Townsend, which is like right in there. So uh, that's really pretty road um, as well. Um, the Seattle road in here, um, it is just kind of a busy inland road. Um, there is some nice little islands you can drive across through and I do recommend doing that. Um, and then that can get you out to uh, the uh, wilderness essentially. So, uh, and if you're flying into Seattle, you'll definitely see the mountains um, as you land uh, here, which is really pretty. It looks uh, really amazing. And then Mount Rainier over here is really amazing. So uh, the thing I would say about camping out here is it gets progressively more difficult uh, as you get near these cities. So you wanna kind of be careful about getting too near a really large city. Um, you know, you want to be at least 20 minutes outside the city um, to try to find something good. Now, interestingly, on the BLM map, um, it actually shows a little bit better um, coverage here of the uh, spots. So there are along I-5 uh, rest areas. Some of those are pretty nice, um, but they're going to be pretty noisy. Um, and the Columbia River, I've driven this many times. Um, it's really pretty. They got a lot of pull-offs. Uh, and areas, um, but it is kind of difficult um, <clears throat> as you get down uh, through the, the Tri-Cities in this area. Uh, it gets pretty dry um, and not too foresty, um, but the hills are really beautiful along the Columbia River. Um, I-5 is just not super great. Um, I've driven that uh, a couple times, but it is quite fast, um, and it's just difficult. So. I would almost really recommend Highway 101 uh, along the ocean front, um, but it just takes a lot longer uh, to do that in general. Uh, but here you see quite a number of spots um, as you get um, almost to California. So uh, let's just zoom in here. On this map, I was really surprised. It doesn't really show too much. It's got this um, a couple of national forests actually, which is great. So these might be a really great stretch uh, to camp in um, right in here uh, before Coos Bay uh, and then uh, this area uh, as well. Unfortunately, you have to zoom in one more thing to start seeing where the campsites are. Um, so this is just almost too far um, from I-5. So you just have to drive, um, you know, that's gonna be, uh, I guess at least a half an hour to get to one of these campsites, maybe even a full hour, uh, including <clears throat> uh, picking out those sites. So, uh, but there are a tremendous number of spots in here. 
Um, and there's actually a third alternative. Um, my uncle lives out in Bend, um, and it's actually a pretty nice road. Um, I've driven this a um, couple times uh, out to Bend. It's a lot drier here, um, and there's, uh, you know, there's actually some really beautiful uh, hills and even some really crazy rocks um, to look at. Um, but if you're thinking of sticking along the coast, um, you know, Highway 101 right in here uh, definitely has uh, a lot of opportunities uh, for camping. So uh, unfortunately, from where I live, um, that's a little bit far uh, to do it in one day. Uh, you can only drive, you know, maybe six to eight hours uh, in a day um, at most. So uh, you kind of want to be careful um, to stretch the, the routes. Uh, but I'm going to keep it in this um, zoom land so you can see uh, where the campsite is. So let's just zoom in here uh, and see what's going on on Coos Bay. So it looks like um, part of this peninsula um, is state forest land. Um, so you can maybe find um, quite a number of spots uh, right around here. Um, but again, the roads are not necessarily uh, well developed uh, in these state forest. Now, uh, here's actually looks like the California border. Um, so you can start to see um, what's happening here. So um, I might actually choose to turn around um, in some of these areas. So I'm not sure um, what I would do. I'd maybe go a little bit into California down to Eureka um, if the trip um, takes a little bit too long. Um, but you can see here uh, that the uh, campground land kind of changes. Um, it doesn't really um, get too close to the ocean front uh, here um, as you get towards California. Um, but it, it does have a lot of little nice uh, coastal towns here. Now on the border here, they do check everything in your car, making sure you have no fruits, vegetables, uh, nuts, and <coughs> any other problems uh, you may want to be careful about. Here you can kind of see the California border. Uh, the BLM also does kind of stop um, a lot of their uh, stuff here. So let me just zoom in and see. Uh, this is uh, one area where they got quite a number of campsites. Um, now, the problem is a lot of these might be hike back into. It just would take uh, a long time to get to some of these. So, so at this point, I'd definitely recommend um, trying to look at some paid campsites along the ocean front as well. Um, and <clears throat> probably the best way to do that uh, is to do uh, this uh, Google search and you can just do camping. Uh, and you can see here uh, near Astoria, you'll see uh, a bunch of other campgrounds. Um, this is some Astoria place. And these KAO resorts, um, those some of those can be uh, you know $50 a night, um, but you gotta be careful. Uh, one of my favorite little towns is this little town called Newport um, right here. Um, and they got a little camp uh, spot here. I'll just show you how this all works. Um, South Beach State Park, um, and you'll see um, Oregon State Parks will basically take you right to the link. Um, and you can see, uh, once it loads here, sorry about this, uh, Oregon State Park, it will give you kind of an overview of what the park is all about um, and give you some directions. Uh, and sometimes they will even show you a registration page here. Um, looks like it doesn't show you that here, but uh, but basically shows you, ah, here you go, reserve. Um, so we'll just try to reserve this here. Um, so let's say uh, I wanted to do this um, next weekend um, and do Saturday um, because it might take me just one night um, and then search for available. Um, and actually it doesn't show everything full. Wow. Um, so um, it looks like it gets very full um, and there's a lot of spots here. So. Um, unfortunately, um, that's an example of why this might not work out so pretty great. Or maybe, maybe there are some spots um, not available, not available. But $35, um, yeah, so I don't know. Let's just pick another weekend uh, date, let's say, on a uh, June 1st. Probably be even still full. Not available. Well, anyway, that's how it goes. Ah, you got to read the fine print though here um, for the tent. Uh, it says buy it, but this is American with Disabilities Act, so I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, you got to be careful. Um, maybe just call them as well. So uh, that's an example of how difficult it can be to find a camping spot. 
So uh, a lot of things change once you get down to California. Um, <clears throat> They do have, um, actually, even in Oregon and Washington, they do this too. There are little rest areas um, and pull-offs um, that you can rest uh, for a few hours, uh, typically um, right along the ocean front. Um, and you may try some of those uh, options uh, as you get down to Highway 101 and Highway 1. Um, and uh, But you can kind of see uh, a lot of the... Uh, Campsites are actually out in this hill region over here, um, not right along the ocean front. Um, now, again, we're talking about free campsites. Uh, and free. This is national forest area. Now, and I missed this little turn off right here. Um, this is for Highway 1. Um, so some of the parts of Highway 1 do not actually go along uh, the conservation areas. Um, so Highway 1 uh, pretty much splits off here and you gotta take uh, this separate route. Um, and it pretty much goes all the way down um, through here and then through San Francisco and then you can kind of take uh, it back to the ocean front here. Now I noticed on the BLM map, um, it shows uh, quite a number more campsites uh, right along these areas. Now these can be very difficult to get to again um, and you pretty much have to take Highway 1 um, to get to some of the ocean front stuff. Now, once you get into the uh, major cities, um, you may be able to find a hostel, but with a car, um, it may be difficult to kind of find parking overnight. So you're basically talking about uh, overnight fees for a car plus uh, trying to park. Um, there are some areas that you can park on street, but most of it is zoned so that uh, local residents can park there. So you can see $30 um, pretty much. This is euros, but it's basically one euro to the dollar right now. So... <laughs> Uh, but you basically see $35 is what you might expect um, from one of these uh, hostels or dorms. So interestingly, the only other location really along uh, this route is in Los Angeles. Um, and then maybe Seattle, uh, but I'll just show you. Uh, we'll do a search for the dorms. Uh, and these are some uh, hostels in LA. Uh, it looks like the price goes up a little bit. Los Angeles, Santa Monica, $44, so it's a little bit pricier, maybe $50 um, for a uh, bunk bed um, in San Francisco, or excuse me, Los Angeles. If you're looking for an opportunity to build a hostel, um, Seattle really needs help with this, so there's only one really opportunity here, maybe this one as well, and they're both about $60, so Seattle gets very expensive. So I did notice there's a slight price difference. You gotta kind of go to the website itself to see. All right, and with that, uh, I'll let you uh, search out the rest of this route um, along uh, Highway 101 uh, and Highway 1, uh, all the way down to LA and even San Diego um, to see uh, what kinds of camping spots they got. Um, and you can see that here as well. Um, and it looks like uh, camping spots don't really show up. Here, uh, I guess you got Highway 1 um, around Monterey. This is actually pretty part of the coast. You can kind of split off from Highway 101. Um, I wouldn't totally recommend this route, um, but you take Highway 1 here. This is actually one of the more beautiful spots of Highway 1 uh, for continuous stretches. One last thing I would mention, um, you may look at doing a Planet Fitness. Uh, it's about $30 a month plus a one year fee of $50, uh, but basically $30 a month. And you can shower at any of these uh, locations uh, along the West Coast here. And you can see they got quite a number of spots down in San Francisco and LA. So that makes it pretty nice. Um, looks like even a spot in Eureka here. Um, and this can be a nice little break um, rather than paying for a hotel. Um, you can just uh, take a shower at a local gym. Uh, Hip Camp does have a lot of private parties, so people rent out their properties and you can stay on their land. Um, and there is quite a number of spots here. Um, prices are uh, pretty expensive. I would say it's like $50 a night. Um, a lot of Hip Camps. Um, it could be more, it could be less. Um, but uh, you can see uh, many of these actually are more than $50, even $100 a night um, at some of these exclusive places. 
So do try to take a look at these US Forest Service maps um, as well as the BLM map um, and try to plan it out. Um, and I'm sure you'll have a great uh, trip. I hope to see you soon. See you later. Thanks.